G'day, I'm Ash. Welcome yourselves back to Team Mechanic Sim. And if you don't like, comment and subscribe, we're going to run you over with a forklift. Anyway, moving on swiftly. We have a couple of vehicles here. KV2, what appears to be an M8, a uh, Vickers, and a Panther. Now, I'm kind of inclined to restore the Panther. What do you think? Yeah, let's go do this one tonight. All right. Welcome to the museum. First of and foremost, this is already... I've already got a panther in my collection. And I'm really only restoring it because I haven't actually done a video about restoring a panther. These things are not exactly easy to maintain. But this is what the engine sounds like. Come on. Oh, prepare for loudness. So, if you can hear me right now, that is the engine of a panther. So yes, there's that. I can't hear you currently because this game is incredibly loud and the engine sound effects are overbearing, but they've been probably turned down in post. But yeah, that's a good look at what is a tank? Do you know what a tank is? Uh, yeah, there's that. There's that magnificent panther. Oh, I can actually hear myself again. Goodness me. And this is our resident panther that we're going to restore today. We brought him out from the warehouse. And uh, hold on, I have to put my lamp down. Turn it on. There we go. Look at that. Now she's lit up correctly. Now this is a proper YouTube video. You've got to have your lighting and your cameras and all that hoo-ha. Right, where do we start with this thing? Uh, let's first off take the turret off, put it on stand one, and then we're going to also take the engine off and put it on stand one. I must admit, I don't know much about the Panthers. I know they were a direct uh, sort of sort of a vehicle that they they introduced based on you know the sloped armor uh, pandemic or so, so to speak uh when, when they were facing the russians they're like oh look sloped armor on a, t on a t-34 so i reckon had they produced more panthers it might have been a more successful vehicle but hearts the transmission broke is probably going to come knocking on the door in a minute oh wait that's a replaceable part anyway really that's it inside this 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 uh turret i thought there'd be more stuff Okay, I'm a bit disappointed with the Panther. I know a lot of the newer editions are better, but uh, here it is. Right. Panther's engine is completely de-rusted now. Look at that, that's all that took. <laughs> Imagine. Sometimes it takes like 30, 40 minutes to restore one of these vehicles. Um, but I have trouble finding parts sometimes. Battle of Kursk was a pretty interesting one, right? I've been reading up on it recently. Uh, and the Panthers, at least some of the ones left behind after that battle, were captured by the Russians. They used them in an uh, artillery corps. Uh, so a, a battery of artillery would have a small tank uh, protection. And oftentimes they'll give them BT-7s or even, you know, Valentines or just the export stuff. And a lot of vehicles that weren't necessarily powerful enough for them to really defend against a, you know, a counter attack or a mechanized attack, so to speak. Got this one gearbox here. Okay, fantastic. There's a couple more interior parts that I think will be done, or at least the de-rusting phase. But uh, they captured a couple of Panthers and used them well and until parts either broke down or they could scavenge parts from other battlefield wrecks. Uh, and in War Thunder, you can actually play the TV as a captured vehicle if you have the coupon for it, or if you participated in the Thunder League event. We're nearly painted. We're done there. Uh, oh, there's a big bloody hole on the top of the vehicle. Hold on. Hammer won't fix that. Grinder won't fix that. There's the welding machine. Uh, we'll just grab this one. And we'll patch this big bloody hole up because you can't have a hole in your tower ring like that. Goodness me, look at that. That is 
significant piece of work there. I'm surprised it disappears so effortlessly. I remember ever welding a section that big in my life. All right, we're gonna go look for some extra Panther parts. All right, uh, we've got a Panzer three and a Panzer four. I don't think I'll do uh, those parts. Okay, we're gonna have to buy them. All right, welcome back. I've just accidentally accepted a job for a client's Panther. We'll, we'll probably, I'll probably do this off stream. It looks like a bit of a hell of a mess there. Comparatively to what mine started out with. Oh, I don't know. Anyhow, let's get back on with the restoration here. We've completed the sanding, the primer, and all of the paint. And now it's a matter of just sort of fiddling around. And now we've got to go outsource all of the parts that we pulled off the vehicle. Um, because that'll at least allow us to well, repair the engine and, and obviously get the rest of the components needed. So, oh, I hate to do this, but we're going to have to install all the parts of the track. So around the round we go. Is this the idler wheel? It is the idle wheel. And you install all the components on the side of the vehicle. And obviously the rear, we'll put in the exhaust and the rear access hatch via the engine. Interesting enough, they still a jack on the back there. I'd never no, no, noticed that. Heaps of things you notice when you actually start pulling apart these vehicles. I guess a game like this is really good for just looking at what could be. It's not exactly a great historical representation of what the vehicles can be. But in saying that... Once we get all the gears on and uh, get everything done, put on the gear A, there we are. One, two, three, four, and five. Those screws are in. We'll put the front drive in. Uh, put the whole machine gun and the driver's side and the front headlight in as well at the same time. Should be focusing on just getting everything on the side done. Uh, let's get in the torsion bar suspension. Or at least the tension rods. I don't know how these work. They just seem to be big metal rods that sit side by side. Uh, the torsion bars are quite interesting. Um, I've never really figured out how they really work. But it is what it is. No real game or mechanic really can explain that to me. Whether or not it's suspension based or whether they're spring loaded or whether there's some other sort of mechanic in place. They could just be structural rigidity in terms of like long metal rods. Which I never really thought about in that way. All right, I've got the inner road wheels to go. And I'm, unlike the Tiger, this this vehicle isn't as annoying. Because they mounted the inner road wheels backwards. So that way they could save a bit of space. So what you get is you get less of a interference from the side of the track. At least that's from what I've been told. Then again, the Panzerkampfwagen... Uh, five alphs d i think this is the model this is the a version it was pretty early on in terms of tank design and, and germany's evolution of what the panther could be is particularly interesting in a subject that i probably would cover in another video anyway got to have those side plates and those side skirts hey put on the sprocket wheel and the sprocket cover we've got the rest of the track now normally you put the track on first before putting everything on um Fascinatingly enough, the well, the A version was produced between July and December 1943, and it was only then changed mid-production to other designations at that time. So the A version is relatively a rare vehicle in terms of Panther designations. So many different things. I think they went up to G variant, uh, and then they had the Panther II, but that's rather a mythical vehicle per se bunch of historical studies and a bunch of historians were talking about the the probability of the other variant of panther which was recovered from germany and what modifications that would have been people say it's a panther too but more inclined to believe that it was just a modification of the g chassis uh, and a further extension of putting a bigger gun in a panther chassis you know had they focused more on vehicles like this uh, maybe they wouldn't have had such a bad time, you know, going after Wonder Waffles like the mouse or uh, building battleships, for example, was a lot of resources that Germany didn't necessarily have 
and although the weight of the vehicle is 44 tons it really on its own is a main battle tank of its day it's got separate fighting compartments sure the transmission isn't as good but if you're looking at a main battle tank sort of a doctrine or idea the panther is probably the best option i know the centurion is technically the first of the world's first proper main battle tank but if you're looking at it from the outset of being uh, germany well there you go you know stuff like the tiger and the, the king tiger and stuff like that are well they're interesting but i don't think they're really that interesting to me having restored the mouse is just a bloody apparent that uh well this vehicle isn't what it appears to be oh come on you know put it on the wrong turret ring at least put it on the correct vehicle <laughs> right there we go and with that we have a fully completed vehicle it's just taken about 40 minutes i wish it would take 40 minutes to restore a panther in the real world yeah i could have it a fleet of these running around doing reenactments but then again they did produce about 2200 of these vehicles on average uh, just putting in the final touches to the vehicle here what have you got? Two 7.92mm MG34s, a 7.5cm KWK uh, L70 with 79 rounds of ammunition. You've got five crew, commander, driver, gunner, loader, radio man, and front machine gunner. But that role is shared by one operator. Max speed of 55 kilometers an hour uh, and an operational range of 200 kilometers an hour. So looking like a very much a a main battle tank in its very essence but you know compared to an actual main battle tank that being of the leopard one well you know 44.2 tons is really the maximum that they tend to get so you're looking at a similar sort of weight territory in a different kind of weight class anyway we're gonna paint this guy i don't, I don't want to paint him today uh, maybe we should go with something a bit extravagant, you know, something that the customer might actually like. So we're going to move into the paint room. There we go. All right, uh, let's grab the paint gun. I'm unsure what to pick. You know what? Let's go with the obnoxious colors. I'm entirely unsure what to do. Okay, pink. Got the other camouflage that I've got already. Why don't camouflage? We've got some different spots. That looks okay. Doesn't look too bad. Ooh, ooh, yuck, ooh, ooh, ooh. You know what? We're going to apply that. We're going to have a pink panther. Yeah, I know it's a little cliche. But there you go. <laughs> it's so bright. You have no idea how bright that is on my screen. But yes, uh, I think we're done with this vehicle. Fully restored. Everything is working on it. We're going to get half a value back for what we got. Goodness me. Pink. What an obnoxious color, hey? But I guess that's what you get for uh, for calling this vehicle a main battle tank. There you go. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, whether or not I should continue making these ty types of videos. Do you enjoy them? Do you not? Is there anything you'd like me to improve upon? Or do you don't mind me rambling on while I restore a vehicle? And ultimately, there is 44 minutes of me talking to myself. And with that, the Panther is gone. Thank you very much for watching. And be sure to like, subscribe, all that kind of bullshit. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ash. And uh, we'll see what we have to restore next. Hey. Catch you next time.